Today I have the pleasure of speaking with Ross McElroy from Fission Uranium. How are you today, Ross? I'm doing well, Tracy. Thank you. Of course, Ross, you're an award-winning player in the resource sector, and you're now officially the CEO of Fission Uranium. A lot of us are very excited to find out about what you plan on doing now that you're the one in charge. Well, I think uh, thank you very much, and I think um, our plan is is fairly simple and straightforward. Um, I plan to uh, raise the awareness of fission uranium and the world-class triple R deposit. Um, I'm going to map out a plan for to move us towards a feasibility and continue to build the team that's going to get us there. Well, speaking of teams, the gentleman who just joined your board as well as an international banker and financier, did I get that right, Darian Yip? Yes, you did. And Darian's been on the board since 2018, so two years now. But we've worked with him uh, for the last probably four years. He was instrumental in bringing the deal together with CGN, our strategic partner, back in 2016. So he's very well recognized, great guy to have on board. I think, uh, and thank you for correcting me, I think what I meant to say is that he's now your chairman. Is that correct? It is correct. Yeah, right. chairman of the board. And of course, uh, so you've got a lot of excitement in the team as you move to the next level, of course, and you have an amazing following. You're always trending in our top 10. Um, I see that you announced that Mark Wittrop will oversee your environmental permitting team. That sounds very intriguing. What, what, tell us a little bit more about Mark's role, please. Sure. Now, Mark's another guy that we've worked with for a lot of years. Um, I brought him on to help us as a consultant back in 2015. And he's been one of the uh, QPs on our, our uh, pre-feasibility studies that we completed in 2019. Mark is a world-recognized permitting and regulatory guru. In fact, he's put uh, you know more than one uranium mine into production. He uh, had a long term with Cameco, put MacArthur River, got it permitted. So I think uh, he's an excellent addition to the team, and he'll he'll help us also going forward. Well, speaking of helping, you helped Investor Intel understand a little bit more about the uh, perceived uranium bull market. Can you talk a little bit more about where we are with uranium pricing in the United States and, and talk to us a little bit more about what's actually real, Ross? Well, you know, I think we were right. We, we do think that we're in the early stages of a uranium bull market. I think that that's pretty clear. Um, we're still waiting for significant increases in the price of uranium. It's been working its way upwards, uh, sort of stalled over the last couple of months. But I think, um, you know, the, the longer that we have increased demand, we see restrictions in the supply, it will continue to drive the price of uranium up. And there's been nothing but closures of uranium mines around the world. Um, and this is really the, the pressures that, that are pushing the price up and we'll continue to see it. And, and the presidential election, of course, is uh, the front of everybody's mind. You can't turn on the television without hearing an update. How do you think uh, this will impact uranium, or do you think it will continue? We believe, obviously, that as a critical material, it will continue to be at the forefront of either presidential candidate's docket moving forward. Yeah, I'm of the same opinion. I think I'm re relatively agnostic as to which, um, you know, who wins. I think that the the recognitions there that that uranium nuclear power is a clean energy, and that is the uh, you know that's the go-to word these days. Uh, we want clean power. Um, nuclear makes up over 15 percent of the U.S.'s uh, electrical needs, and I think that that will also continue, and not just for the U.S. I mean globally, that's the situation. But I think the election, either way, I think will still work in in favor for for the uranium sector. We're seeing a lot of new investors to the market. Everyone's at home. They're starting to play the market. So with uranium, you're one, of course, one of the high volume plays in the market for uranium. Could you explain to the new investor the competitive advantages of fission uranium, Ross? Thank you. Well, <clears throat> what fission uranium has is, I'd say, the world's best large, high-grade, shallow deposit that is uh, in Saskatchewan, and by the way, Saskatchewan is recognized as probably the number one or number two jurisdiction worldwide for investment, uh, mining investment. So we're in the right area and we have the kind of deposit that we think 
you know, we'll, we'll take it along, but it should see the light of day. That is a deposit that should be able to go into production. And for all of you shareholders out there who are knowledgeable, and we know we ha you've had a lot of shareholders stay true to fission uranium, what should they be looking forward to in the next quarter or two? Well, as I mentioned at the beginning, I, th I think these, you know, the, our next uh, keys are to continue to build the team out. And for me, really, it's all about laying out what the plan is as we move forward. And it is really all about getting us through the feasibility and the regulatory part, because at the end of that, we want to receive licenses to build and operate. And we think that this is a project that can take us there. Well, Ross, as always, it's a pleasure to speak with you. I hope you have a wonderful day, and we're looking forward to following Vision Uranium. Good. Well, thank you very much, Tracy. It's been a pleasure.